Okay. Um, so let's look at 7.2. Uh, I, I have a lot of stuff written out already. The, these are my notes. But um, uh, the reason I, I, I just want to go through it, um, go through what I've already written out with you. And you can kind of, you can, of course, pause the video or rewind the video to write this stuff down or, or take notes or whatever. Um, but there's a lot of writing involved, and so I'd, I'd rather just uh, kind of go through it this way rather than write stuff down in real time. Um, anyway, in 7.2, we're going to be talking about the ambiguous, the ambiguous case of the law of signs, um, and that's the side-side angle case. So uh, just as kind of a reminder, side-side uh, angle, so, so if we have some triangle ABC, a side-side angle triangle would be one where you know something like A, C, and angle A. So you know this side, and you know this side, and you know this angle, right? That would be a side-side angle. There are others, right? You could have, you could know B, A, and angle B, you know, or whatever, right? You can know C, B, and angle C. Those would all be side-side angle cases. Um, uh, Something that would not be side side angle would be like if you had if you knew B angle C and then side A. That's not side side angle. That's side angle side, uh, which is not an ambiguous case at all, right? So so the ambiguous case is the side side angle case. Um, we talked in seven point one about the side side angle and the angle side angle case. In 7.3, we're going to talk about the side angle side and the side 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 cases. With those four cases, there's only one possible triangle that can result from the information that you're given. Um, so they're not ambiguous. Uh, if you were given angle, angle, angle information, there would be infinitely many triangles that would fit that description. So it's not even worth discussing trying to solve it. It's impossible to solve. Um, but if you're given side-side angle information, this is the ambiguous case. There are zero, one, or two possible triangles that will fit to the description that you're given with side-side angle. And um, here's the reason for that. <clears throat> so let's suppose that you know uh, side A, side C, and angle A. So you know A, you know C, and you know this angle, right? Um, the rest of the information is unknown, right? <clears throat> um, let's also suppose that A is an acute angle for the purposes of this discussion. A could be obtuse, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but, but for now, let's just assume that A is acute. Um, let's also let H represent the height from B to C, uh, from B to, sorry, not from B to C, from B to B. <laughs> Right, so we want uh, we want H to represent this height right here. Okay. All right. So there are four cases that we need to consider. The first case is if our side A that we're given is less than the height H. Okay. If that's the case, we would get a picture that looks something like this. Okay. So we know the length of A. We know the length of C, and we know the angle between uh, side C and side B. We don't know the length of B, and so that's why I've drawn it with a dotted line, because we don't really know how far this side extends, but we know that, it ha that, that this angle right here is fixed. So we can't, for example, draw the triangle so that, uh, so that the segment from A to the end point here match up because that would change the angle that we were given, right? This angle is fixed. So we know that this line, however far it extends, has to extend in this direction and not in this direction, okay? And so right away, you can see why we have a problem here. If A is less than the height, uh, then no matter how you swing this line around, this little segment around, because we don't know this angle, right? So you could, you could swing this line, this little segment, you know, over this way if you wanted to, right? So you could kind of swing this thing around, but no matter how you swing it, 
it's never going to be able to meet up with this side down here, right? This, this is an impossible scenario. So if A is less than the height, no such triangle exists. Now, how are you going to know that that happens? Well, if you apply the law of sines, right? So you know this side, you know this angle, you know this side. And so you could apply the law of sines by saying A over sine A equals C over sine C to try to solve for angle C. If you do that, um, then you're going to get a scenario where you'll get a statement that says sine C is some number greater than one, which we know is impossible, right? The range of sine is negative one to one. You can't get sine of some angle to be bigger than one. And so right away, you know, you apply the law of sines to try to solve for angle C, and right away you're going to run into a contradiction that tells you, oh, it's not possible, right? And so that's how you're going to know that no such triangle exists. <clears throat> okay, so that's the first case. <clears throat> the second case would happen if A equals H. So if our segment here is equal in length to the height of the triangle, well, then you're going to get one triangle that exists. Okay, it, namely, it's going to be this right triangle right here, right? That's going to be the triangle that you're then going to be able to solve for, all right? So that's if A equals H. Um, when you go to, when you apply the law of sines to solve for angle C in that one, you're going to get sine C equals 1, which should make sense because C would have to be a 90 degree angle in that scenario, right? So sine C would equal 1. The third case is A is going to be greater than H now, but less than C, right? So it's going to be longer than this side, but shorter than this side, okay? If you have A, if you have a that's longer than this side, but shorter than this side, then you actually get two possibilities, okay? So just looking at the first one, right? So, uh, so here's one possible triangle. Right? You can definitely get this side to match up with this side now. Um, and uh, this side is going to be less than that side. Right, So that's one possibility. But notice that another possibility, since this angle, since angle B is not known, it's not fixed, and the side length little b down here is also not known, you could take this uh, segment and rotate it the other direction, right, you could rotate it kind of this way to get a second, to get a second possible triangle, right, that would also fit the description. And that's what I've tried to draw here. Okay, so this is another possibility. So, uh, so if A is bigger than the height, but less than the other side, less than side C, then you actually have two triangles that will fit that description, right? These two triangles will fit that description. Um, to describe those two possibilities, let's hand ourselves, uh, let's, let's say that sine C equals some number K. Okay, then it's going to be the case, first of all, that K is going to be between 0 and 1, right? So sine C is going to be some number between 0 and 1. But it's, uh, uh, but it's also going to be the case that the angle A that you were given uh, to begin with, that angle is going to be less than sine inverse of K. The reason for that uh, is because... Um, uh, sine inverse of K would represent the angle C. And um, uh, in order to get two possible triangles, so, so, one, so let, me, let me say that a, a, a different way. It, it actually helps if you read the next statement, right? One of the solutions is going to be sine inverse of K. The other solution is going to be 180 degrees minus sine inverse of K. And you'll know if you have, you'll know if 180 degrees minus sine inverse of K works if this angle plus that angle is still less than 180 degrees, right? So if A plus 180 degrees minus sine inverse of K is less than 180 degrees, 
well, then you've got a second possible solution, right? So this solution will always work. This solution will sometimes work if this condition is met. Well, if you do a little algebra, right, you can subtract 180 from both sides and you can move the sine inverse of K over to the right. And then you get, you know, A has to be less than sine inverse of K. So that's, that's where that one comes from. Uh, so that's the third possibility. Finally, the fourth possibility is going to happen when A is greater than C, right? Uh, if A is greater than C, this will uh, yield only one possible triangle, okay? Only one such triangle will, uh, will exist because again, so imagine now that you've got A that's even longer than C. So that, that forces it to have to extend out in this direction. If you try to swing it back the other way, since it's longer than C, you're going to end up on the other side of the triangle. And then A uh, would be a different thing. Oh, you couldn't see any of that. <laughs> Shoot. You know this whole dot cam thing. Ugh. Okay, let me try again. Let me say that again. What I was saying was, if A is longer than C, then you're forced to swing out in this direction. Okay. And that's the only possible triangle that you're going to get. If you try to swing out in the other direction, since A is longer than C, it would have to, it would have to surpass C, and then angle A would be a different angle, right? So if A is longer than C, uh, you only get one possible triangle. But you do get a, a, a valid solution there. Um, once again, you're going to get uh, K to be something between zero and one. In other words, sine C is going to be somewhere between zero and one. Um, but A is going to be bigger than sine inverse of K. Or equivalently, when you look for that second solution, you add A to the, to the second solution, you're going to get something bigger than or equal to 180. And so you know then that you can't get a triangle out of those two angles. So those are the four possible cases. <laughs> uh, like drinking from a fire hose, I guess. Uh, a lot of kind of nitty gritty details there, but, um, but if you think it through, right, you, you should be able to sort of make sense of all this. Now, those four cases are what happens when we consider an acute angle A. Uh, a could be obtuse, right? If A is obtuse, then we would have similar kinds of cases. Uh, you're welcome to look at your textbook. It, it kind of briefly mentions all this stuff. It doesn't explain it in a ton of detail, but but it does have uh, the cases when A is obtuse kind of listed out and drawn out. So you can stare at those pictures and kind of make sense of it. Um, but at the end of the day, we even if A is obtuse, we still treat that the same way as if it were acute. Uh, and it turns out that uh, that it that everything still works out nicely. Uh, even if A is obtuse. So, so here's kind of a summary. Okay, here's a summary of what we've said. So in a nutshell, this is how we deal with the ambiguous case. Okay, so suppose you're given some side-side angle information, and, and let's say more specifically that the information you're given is, you know side A, you know side C, and you know angle A. Your first step is going to be to find angle C. Okay, uh, using the law of sines. Um, so, so we're going to use the law of sines to find angle C. If applying the law of sines yields sine C greater than one, then no such triangle exists and you're done. If applying the law of sines yields sine C equals one, then one triangle exists. Okay, and you can go ahead and solve the triangle, right? Once you've got C, once you've got angle C, then you can get angle B pretty easily. And then once you get angle B, then you can find side B by applying the law of sines again, right? So, uh, so not terribly difficult. If applying the law of sines yields sine C between zero and one, then either one or two triangles exist. And here's how you're gonna know. Okay, so let K equal sine C, then C1, uh, we'll, then we'll let C1 be sine inverse of K, and that's always a solution. That will always work, okay? Then we're gonna let C2 be 180 degrees minus C1. 
If A plus C2 is less than 180 degrees, then C2 is also a solution. If A plus C2 is bigger than or equal to 180 degrees, then C2 is not a solution and you only have one solution in that case. Okay, so <laughs> that's a lot of uh, talking. Let's, let's get to some examples. So I'm gonna give you three examples. I'm gonna give you a, a, an example of one of, uh, one of each of the possibilities. Okay, so let's solve triangle ABC if B equals 55 degrees, 40 minutes. I copied these from your book, by the way. Uh, little b equals 8.94 meters, and A equals 25.1 meters. Okay, you're welcome to pause the video, try this out, uh, see if you can get the solution on your own. Uh, here's, uh, so, but I'm gonna work it out now. <laughs> so pause the video now if you wanted to try it before I gave you my solution. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do, actually the first thing I'm gonna do is draw a picture. And there's really no telling if this picture is at all accurate, but for me it just helps me to organize the information I was given. So, uh, so I was given B, I was given this side, B, 8.94, and I was given this side, A, 25.1. So sure enough, this is a side-side angle. I'm not gonna try to write the angle inside of there, but, um, but yeah, this is a side-side angle. And if I was trying to solve this, I would say since I uh, was given side uh, A, I'm going to try to solve for angle A first by applying the law of sines. Okay, so I'm going to say uh, B over sine B equals A over sine A. I don't know angle A yet, but um, but that's how I would set it up to solve for it. I should be able to solve, the, solve for this pretty easily now. Um, so, uh, so I can multiply both sides by sine A. Well, how do I want to do this? Uh, it might have been easier to use the reciprocals here. And maybe, so maybe I'll just do that and I'll say, well, if this is true, then the reciprocal identity should also be true, right? So it should be the case sine 55 degrees 40 minutes over 8.94 equals sine A over 25.1. And now I can just multiply both sides by 25.1. I'm gonna I'm gonna flip the flip the equation around and rewrite it in the other order and say sine A equals 25.1 times sine 55 degrees 40 minutes over 8.94. And let's see what we get. If your calculator doesn't do minutes, then you'll have to change this into decimal, into decimal degrees. And just as a reminder, right, 40 minutes is 40 sixtieths of a degree. So this would be 55 degrees plus 40 sixtieths of a degree. All right, it's been a while since we've seen that, but you could plug that into your calculator now to see what you get. I think that my calculator does minutes, so I'm just gonna type it in the way that it looks. Um, make sure you're in degree mode. So I'm gonna do 25.1 times sine of 55 degrees, 55 degrees, uh, 40 minutes, uh, divided by 8.94. 
and I'm getting sine A equals 2.31844, whatever. I'll round to three decimal places, but that's the answer I'm getting. Right away, we see that there's a problem, okay? Sine A cannot be bigger than one. And here we're getting a statement that says sine A equals 2.318. That's a contradiction. So uh, we know right off the bat that, hey, there's no solution, right? There's no solution here. No such triangle fits the description. A is two, side A, uh, or I guess not side A, it would be side B in this case, I think is too short. Um, anyway, so that's that. Uh, that's that first example, okay? Uh, let's do another one. We like these ones. <laughs> we like the ones where there are no solution because your work is over pretty quick. Okay, part B. Let's do uh, A equals 55.3 degrees. Little a is 22.8 feet. And little b is 24.9 feet. <clears throat> Go ahead and pause the video. See if you can work this out on your own. Okay, but here's, here's my solution. Again, I'm gonna draw a picture and it's actually pretty unlikely that the picture I'm drawing actually looks like the triangle I'm gonna solve for, but that's okay. I, I just wanna uh, get the information down. So I'm given this angle, I'm given this side, I'm given this side. So sure enough, right, it's a side-side angle. So this is a side-side angle triangle again. Um, what would I solve for first? I think I would solve for angle B here, right? Because I know A and side A, and then I know side B, but not angle B. So I'm gonna apply law of sines to try to solve for angle B. Uh, learning from my past mistake, I think instead of doing A over sine A equals B over sine B, I'm going to do sine A over A equals sine B over B. It's the same, it's the same idea, same thing. Um, so, uh, so I'm going to say sine A over A equals sine b over b. Multiplying through by 24.9, I'm going to get sine b equals 24.9 times sine 55.3 divided by 22.8. Let's see what I get this time. <clears throat> 24.9 times sine of 55.3 uh, divided by 22.8 is approximately 0 0.89. Uh, let's see, I had three sig figs, so I'll say it's approximately 0.898. Okay, well, that's between zero and one. So that tells me that we've got one or two solutions. Okay, the first solution is just gonna be, you know, sine inverse of 0.898. That's one of the possibilities. So, um, and I'm gonna call that B1. So I'm gonna say, okay, so B1 is, um, I, I, actually, let me let me organize this a little better. So I'm going to say, uh, so maybe I'll make a little chart. Say solution one and solution two, just to keep myself organized. So for solution one, I'm going to say B1 
B equals, or it's approximately, uh, sine inverse of 0 0.898. So let's see how much that is. Sine inverse 0 0.898 is about 63.9 degrees. <clears throat> okay. Um, so I've got angle B. Now I can find angle C because I know angle A is 55.3, right? So I can say uh, A plus B plus C has to equal 180. I know that A is 55.3. I know that B is 63.9. I don't know side C yet. I'm going to run out of space. So I'm going to do some work in my head. I hope that's OK. I'm going to say 180 minus 55.3 minus 63.9 is 60.8. So then C would be 60.8 degrees. Oh, I should call this B1. Sorry. So. Uh, Okay, so I have two pieces of information. So I was given three pieces of information, I found two. So I have one more piece of information I need to find and it's this side right here, right? So I still need to find side C. And um, uh, well, what would be the best way to do that? Pythagorean theorem won't work because it's not a right triangle. So I guess I would have to use law of signs again um, so I'll use law of signs again. Uh, so I'm going to say yeah, so uh, when I use law of signs, I kind of want to use the original information I was given so that I don't end up with any rounding errors. So again, I'm going to say uh, sign A over A equals sine C oh and here's where it would be better to <laughs> to use the reciprocal one to use the reciprocal identity so so let me let me do this again so I'm gonna say I'm gonna say A over sine of angle A equals C over sine of angle C. And then solve for sines or for side C. So then I'm gonna I, so then I get C equals sine 60.8 times 22.8 over sine 55.3. Let me see about how much that is. So sine 60.8 times 22.8 times sine of 55.3 is 16.4, uh, about 16.4. And we're working with feet, so I'm going to say it's about 16.4 feet. And there's side C. Whew. Okay, and if you thought that was a lot of work, we're not even done. <laughs> that we're about halfway done, because uh, that's one possibility. The other possibility, right, it could be that B2 is 180 degrees minus B1. That's 180 minus 63.9. 180 minus 63.9 is 116.1. Okay. Now, to see if that will yield a valid triangle, 
we need to add this to A and see if the result is less than 180. So I'm just going to do a little check here to see if this is even a possibility. Right? So I'm going to say A plus B2 would be 55, 55.3 plus 116.1, 116.1 plus 55.3 is 171.4. And that is less than 180. So this is going to give us a valid triangle, right? It's less than 180. So it's, it's a valid possibility, uh, which is kind of bad news for us because that means, well, that means that we still have to find uh, everything else. Okay. But this is, this is another possibility, right? So that could be angle B. If that's angle B, then angle C is going to be, well, it's going to be 180 minus 55.3 minus 116.1. Or since we already did the addition, you could just say 180 minus 171.4, right? 180 minus 171.4 is 8.6 degrees. So that's a really small angle for angle C. And then we can use that to solve for side C. So I'm going to say A over sine A equals C over sine C. So I'm going to get C equals uh, sine 8.6 degrees times 22.8 over sine 55.3. And let's see about how much that is. I actually, I think I saved this in my calculator so I can just go back and change 60.8 to 8.6. And I get uh, about 2.8, say, say 2.80 feet. Um, and that's the other possibility. So, so here we have an example of, so first we did an example where we got no solution, right? No such triangle existed. Now we've seen one where we got two possible triangles that fit the description. Let's look at one more example. And uh, if your intuition is any good, <laughs> then you probably know this example is going to be one where we get one solution, where we only get one solution. So let's take a look. Let's, do, let's solve um, A equals 43.5 degrees. Little a equals 10.7 inches and little c equals 7.2 inches. OK, so I'll give you a second to pause the video, uh, see if you can solve this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and work out my solution. So again, I'm going to start off drawing a triangle. Probably doesn't look like the real thing. That's OK. It's only here to help me organize myself. So I was given 10.7, I was given 7.2, and then I was given this angle. So this is a side-side angle for sure. So the first thing I'm going to do probably is try to find angle C. OK, so I'm going to say sine 43.5 degrees, so sine A over A equals sine C over C. So that means sine C is 7.2 times sine of 43.5 over 10.7. 
Uh, so let's see about how much sine C is. <clears throat> So 7.2 times sine 43.5 divided by 10.7. That's about 0 0.463, rounding to three significant figures. Um, OK, so again, uh, I have two possible solutions. I'm going to split my work up. Or, or I guess I should say I might have two possible solutions. Let's see. Um, so for solution one, I'm going to say C1 equals sine inverse, or it's approximately, sine inverse of 0 0.463. That comes out to about 27.6 degrees. OK. Uh, so now we have this angle. We have this angle. We have this angle. And so we can find the third one, right? So we can say uh, B is going to be 180 minus A. Minus C one that's a hundred and eight point nine degrees. And now that we have that angle, we can use it to solve for side B, which are which is our last piece of missing information. So we can say uh, A over sine A equals B over sine B. So that means that B is going to be sine of 108.9 degrees times 10.7 over sine of 43.5 degrees. So sine 108.9 times 10.7 divided by sine of 43.5 is about 14.7 inches. Okay. So there's one solution. Now let's see if we have another solution. If we have another solution, then it would be of the form, right, C2 would have to be 180 degrees minus C1. That would be 180 degrees minus 27.6 degrees. That's 152.4 degrees. Something tells me we're not going to have another solution. But just to be sure, now we would add that to A, right? We would say, well, A plus C2, that would be 43.5 plus 152.4. That comes out to 195.9, which is bigger than 180, right? So no second solution. Okay, so we don't have a second solution, we just have the one solution. There. And um, that's that. Okay, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs>